Welcome to the unexpected fourth edition to the series of the most niche TCGs or CCGs that I collect, and this one is Neopets. So I'm going to go through the pages, um, just flip through them as I talk about the game, and then we'll go back and review why I picked these specific cards for my collection, because it is not one of every card, nor even one of every hollow. But hopefully some of these things start looking familiar to you. If you ever played Neopets in like 1998 through 2000 something, um, I think at the time the most popular online game was a precursor to things like Club Penguin. Um, it was around the same time as RuneScape. You would get your own virtual pet, a Neopet, and train it, um, teach it to battle, but also make it more intelligent, learn magic, um, and most importantly, collect items. So you can see a lot of these cards are items. Um, there are different types of items. You could feed your Neopet, give it toys, play with it. Um, and all kinds of other things, and trading, and the online commerce was a huge part of it. Also, I learned how to write HTML because of Neopets. I'm sure a lot of other people did, too. Um, there were, you could design your own pet page, you could have guilds with other people. So they made a TCG of this game, the Neopets TCG, by Wizards of the Coast. Familiar name, right? 2003 to 2006 or 2007. Uh, we're nearing the end of the binder, so my duplicates of favorite cards. Um, and now I'm going to flip back to the beginning and talk about them in more detail. Um, so I decided to collect some specific cards from the TCG. There were 10 sets overall, um, lots of holographic cards in each set. Those are the chase ones. There were some secret rares, which we'll get to and talk about um, in a minute. Um, but I was a big fan of the fairies. They're a huge part of the Neopets website. Um, and so you can see here, this is Fjord the Fairy Queen. This is from the first set, the base set, that had a really cool hollow printing pattern. Super, super sparkly. Um, all the base set hollows had this, but unfortunately they got rid of that foiling pattern in later sets um, and switched to a more traditional, regular foiling pattern, which you can see here. Um, just kind of like shiny, glossy. Um, so I wanted to collect one of each holographic fairy and any of their associated items that are also holographic. And there are a couple of exceptions because there are a couple of fairy characters I wanted to collect that were not hollow, they were rare, and so I included those as well. So here you can see Fiora the Fairy Queen, her wand, her rod, her doll, and the Hidden Tower, where she lives and operates. Uh, another hollow fairy. Here there are two versions of this card too, the Darkest Fairy, and then the later set, this set was called the Darkest Fairy, and the doll. And again, an example of a non-hollow rare, but it's a character, so I included it. Um, Elucin, you could do quests with Elucin, that's her staff, and quests with Judora. That was a part of the game as well. There were quests with the Snow Fairy, which we'll get to. Judor had a bewitched ring. So as I'm going through the two pages um, of fairy cards, I'm going to talk about some oddities with the game. The first thing is when they decided to make this. The game came out in 2003, which to me at least was after the height of Neopets. To me, peak Neopets is like 2000, maybe 2001. Um, lots and lots of people playing. By 2003, I think I'd stopped playing. Almost everyone I knew had stopped playing. Came back to it occasionally just for fun. Um, but not since then. So this is one of my favorite cards. Tilia the Snow Fairy, you could do Snow Fairy quests as well. Her token, the Soup Fairy, where you get free soup from the soup kitchen if your new pets are hungry and you can prove that you're poor. Another favorite card, Neri the Water Fairy, kind of like a mermaid. Um, evil mermaids over here, the Drench of the Healing Springs, where the Water Fairy would heal your Neopet. Um, so the timing of the game was kind of strange, and I think after the, the game's popularity, which is probably why this game is considered niche, right? Meaning, like, not a lot of people collect it. Very, very hard to find these cards. Um, and I think that if the game had been around, like, 99, 2000, 2001, a lot more people would have collected it. Um, so by 2006, 2007, I imagine Neopets was like almost totally dead, um, or at least the state it's in now with very, very few players, um, which is why the later sets are incredibly, incredibly difficult to find. Here's another example of a card from the base set. One of my favorite cards, the Rainbow Paintbrush, or because it's in the base set, super, super sparkly. Um, paintbrushes were extremely rare items. You could use, I mean, the, the basic colors were common, but then these colors like rainbow and such um, were very hard to find and very expensive. I remember I got, I'll show you actually in a minute, got Starry Paintbrush, Island Paintbrush, and then here there's one other paintbrush that couldn't fit here, and I'll hollow spot paintbrush, so I just put it behind there so it fits cleanly on two pages in this four pocket binder. One of my other favorite cards, Lost Desert Paintbrush. I love this color too. And then um, I obtained a fairy paintbrush and painted my Kugra fairy color, which to me at the time was a super big accomplishment. I love this card as well. Um, the second strange thing about the game is they didn't print some key characters or items. Oh, so here are the negs. Um, negs were items, a special kind of item was just basically a food, but it had some other properties as well, if I recall, that the snowagger would guard. Um, we'll get to the snowagger later, but I wanted to collect one of every neg, even the ones that were not holographic. Only a couple of these are holographic. The fish neg. If you ever played the game Mirka Chase, the fish neg was the one that gave you the most points. Um, second thing is, oh, sorry. I'm going to explain this page as well. Novas. I love the item Nova. It was a one-time use item in battle, and if you were 
really rich, you get a wand or staff or rod of nova or supernova or ultra nova. So I collected one of each nova, including this nova fruit, nova storm. And then because I wanted the, this wand of nova, leech's wand, which is, a, I think, a fake rod of ultra nova, and the wand of ultra nova. Love this card. I also want, collected one of every wand card. Um, no special significance to that, but I thought I just went with the theme. So I got a couple extra copies like this was earlier represented as part of Judora, Judora with the fairies. Um, more wands over here, and then items that I considered iconic. In addition to the wands, the negs, the paintbrushes, the novas, code stones. So these are the holographic code stones. These two, this one, there are a few non-hollow code stones, so I didn't include them, but this one is a holographic version of one because it is a promo. Not sure how you can get this, um, but a hollow promo. Bag of Neo points. You might remember those events. Something has happened, and you magically get randomly get Neo points and the one doubloon coin. So they didn't include. This is a page of some of my favorite um, characters or Neopets. So Fire Shrew, I think this looks awesome. Also from the base set, so super sparkly. Cougar Chieftain, Ida Cougar. So I love those. Rainbow Pateri. This was actually an in joke. Um, this is the only card I know that has this many types, all six different types in the game. Um, and it looks exactly like, if you play Magic, Birds of Paradise. So they changed how the Rainbow Pateri looks to make it resemble the Birds of Paradise card, also by Magic, produced by Watsi. The Rainbow Sticky Hand, such a cool item. Um, and then some of these characters, the Keeper of Time, King Altador, the Trading Post, such a key location. So the other thing I was gonna say is they weirdly didn't print some other key locations or people like the Shop Wizard, the Brain Tree, and the Esophagor, they don't have cards of. But here's some of my favorite villains. Lord Cass, Dr. Sloth, and the Snowwalker, one of the most expensive cards. In terms of value, again, some of these halls are really hard to find. I'd say range um, from, you know, could be $5 for some of the base set hollows, but probably the average hollow for the game is like $20 to $25, and then some of them a lot more. Snowwalker probably worth like $120. And on this page, we've got the secret rares. So Hannah and the Ice Caves, the set had five secret rares. These were all jelly cards. Um, or sorry, these, these five. Um, these two, not hollow, but these are hollow. And then the set, The Darkest Fairy, had these. Actually, all five of these secret rares I included in the fairy page also to represent them, so I have two of each of these. Um, the secret rare is probably worth anywhere from 100 to 200 depending on which one it is, and those are probably the most expensive cards um, the secret rares are, other than this card of The Darkest Fairy. Now, there's one exception to that. Another oddity of the game is the sketch cards. So in the set, The Darkest Fairy, they had these serialized card cards that were sketches of Neopets, like hand-drawn sketches, and each one had a different, unique sketch that someone drew. For 12 different Neopets, I think they had 100 of each. Not sure the exact number. They're extremely, extremely hard um, to find. Which brings me to another oddity I wanted to, to mention in the video, that the economics of this game right now are weirdly out of whack for me, right? It took a while. It was hard to find some of these cards but not insanely difficult, not insanely expensive, whereas it isn't insanely expensive to get a single sketch card or any sealed product. So unlike my other collections of Nice CCGs, I don't have any sealed product for this one. I'll turn the page here too. So my favorite cards, um, multiple copies of, because I just thought I'd get 12 of these because these are uncommons and these are commons. So I had a Fairy Kugra and the Forbes Palace Guards are two Fairy Kugras over there, uncommon. And here the Candy Chan, a common card, which is weird because in the game, I remember the Candy Chan was one of the rarest pet pets. A pet that your pet could have. Um, so a common card, but in the game this was like five or ten million you know, points at the time. I always wanted the Candy Chan or Blue Candy Chan. So the sketch cards of Sealed Product are incredibly expensive, so are graded cards for this game, which is weird because so few people collect it. So I have this theory, I'll go back to the beginning while I talk in case you want to see these again, um, that so many people got into this during COVID because it was WotC. People wanted anything WotC, everything WotC, um, and we're kind of going for the typical collector mindset. First go for the most expensive, hardest to find things, the sketch cards, the sealed product. So those are disproportionately expensive compared to actual singles or even complete sets of the game, which you can get for way less proportionally um, than those things. So I don't have any sealed product, any sketch cards. I don't care much about the sketch cards, but very I'm glad this collection and the, the unique way I sort of designed it is now complete. Um, I will still probably collect multiples of these. Some of these cards, like the paintbrushes and the fairies, I just love so much. They bring back so many memories of the game. I keep on <laughs> collecting duplicates. I have them piling up in my trade binder just for fun. Um, think anything else about this game I would say? I started learning how to play the game too. I play with my son. We built some simple decks. It's super fun, easy to learn. Um, pretty simple, but but not, not simplistic either. Um, so I think the game itself is probably underrated. I can't imagine how many people play now, like five, and that's it. I'll end here with a shot of my favorite cards. I hope you enjoyed this look at the unique Neopet CCG, this random collection that I have. And over here, the secret rares one more time. Um, again, weird economics because of the price spike, weird timing of the game because it was post Neopets peak popularity, um, and weird choice of cards in a lot of cases, not printing some of the best ones. But thankfully, I did make some of my, fairy, my favorites, who are the Fairy Queen, 
Wanda Ultranova, the Snowagger. And that's it.